I'm very happy to be here and welcome to uh, give you my short talk on John Giorno, uh, uh, on whom I'm writing my dissertation. Uh, so he's notoriously difficult to classify, and he has been variously described as a beat poet, as a New York school poet, obviously, as a pop poet, and as a sound poet. I mean, all of this is true, but all of this is kind of untrue at the same time. Uh, and today he's probably most famous for his poem paintings, uh, which also means that his audience tends to come from art circles uh, rather than from poetry circles. Uh, and it's especially true since he spent the final two decades of his life with a Swiss artist called Ugo Rondinane. Um, and uh, he, uh, that artist currently manages his estate in collaboration with the gallery owner Elizabeth D. Uh, so, scholarship on Jarno is relatively scarce, but uh, we can thank Daniel Kane in his 2017 book, uh, Do You Have a Band, Poetry and Punk in New York City, uh, for providing perspective on his role as a transitional figure between the St. Mark's poetry scene and the New York punks. Uh, so, Kane describes him as, quote, downtown's court jester, because time and time again you can see him trying to throw a wrench into the amicable and reverential dynamics of the New York school. And he was particularly intent on denouncing uh, the parroting, which according to him characterized their aesthetics. So for instance, in one letter to Brian Geisen, written in 1967, he rejoices at the effects of O'Hara's death on the New York poetry scene, uh, seeing it also as the death of a tired aesthetic movement. And I quote, with Frank O'Hare dying, the New York School of Poetry has all but disappeared, haggling among themselves and writing their dumb poetry, which everyone now admits is dumb. <laughs> so uh, Kane, who quotes this, too, has extensively written about Giorno's oppositional poetics, and particularly about the fact that the practices of the first generation New York School poets were one of his most important counter models. So to provide an example, uh, if their readings took place in coffee shops uh, with no sound system, uh, Giorno had to reinvent the poetry, uh, the poetry reading as a total assault on the senses with stereo speakers, psychedelics, and heavy clouds of fog and incense. And you have an example of that right there. Uh, uh, alternatively, if as gay poets, uh, the New York School poets barely address gay sexuality in their poems, he would write his own pornographic poem, appropriate from an underground mimeographed smut publication and describing a gay gangbang in the plainest language possible. And I'm not quoting that here. <laughs> uh, another letter, uh, which he wrote in 1965, aptly demonstrates his obsession with Frank O'Hara and the spirits of emulation, or bootlegging, depending on your point of view, uh, that surrounded him. And I quote, I've written a Frank O'Hara poem. I took Hotel Transylvanie, his best poem, written in 1959, the one that made him famous, and I typed it on my onion skin paper, signed my name to it, and sent it to C Magazine. If I write Frank O'Hara's best poem, and then write my poems, then Frank will have to write my poems, or stop writing, which he has. Besides other things, it's a reply to the NYSFP, who only copy Frank's and John Ashbery's poems." Unquote. On the other hand, this marks, uh, on the one hand, this marks Giorno as a trickster, as someone who knows where to put the knife in. And it's clear that he perfectly understood the subversive powers of appropriation as an artistic gesture. Since all of his writing from the mid-1960s to the mid-1970s consisted in experiments with found poetry and collage, which were partly inspired by uh, pop art and by the cut-up. But on the other hand, and this is what I'm interested in here, it also proves his admiration for Franco Harris' poetry and his deep connection to New York soul poetics. So first of all, there's no need here to dwell on the fact that appropriation was a central implement in the toolbox of some New York uh, school poets, for instance, Ashbury or Berrigan, and that they used it along with other tools, such as collaborative writing, to challenge notions of individual authorship, of originality, and of the unified poetic voice. Secondly, uh, the typical New York school preoccupation with the banal and the everyday, as well as the elegiac longing, which effuses many poems by O'Hara, 
are also very present in Giorno's poetry. This is perhaps uh, not so palpable in his early found poems, which in their replications of newspaper crime pages seem more like adaptations of Andy Warhol's death and disaster paintings, but to find New York school echoes in Giorno's poetry, we should rather turn to his later non-found poems starting in the mid-1970s. So in some of these poems, indeed, among uninterrupted flows of repeated phrases, which are sometimes very intense and difficult to listen to, one can perceive elements that are distinctly inspired by the New York School, especially if one concentrates on localized readings of a few lines or a few words. For instance, the poem, Put Your Ear to Stone and Open Your Heart to Sky, a fragmented evocation of the cruising and disco culture of the late 1970s, contains passages which, feels like, uh, which feel like oblique homages to Frank O'Hara. So in the poem, the protagonist's broken stream of consciousness moves back and forth from the scene of the club, quote, I'm going upstairs to see what's happening here, I want to check out downstairs, uh, the scene of his desire, uh, quotes, if uh, I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> the action, quote, a sip of vodka, I'm putting Crisco on my hand, give me some poppers. And finally, his own obsessive thoughts, quotes, and I keep thinking about writing down the list of things I gotta do tomorrow in New York. One line in particular seems to be a direct response to the typical I do this, I do that moments, uh, found in poems like The Day Lady Died. And quotes, uh, I've been to the post office, I'm going to the bank, and what am I going to do about Con Ed? So here we're close to uh, the day Lady dies, I go on to the bank, and Miss Dillwag, first name Linda, once heard, doesn't even look, look up my balance for once in my life. Uh, but here the steady nonchalance of O'Hara's poetic persona is replaced with the tedium of dealing with bureaucracies and anxieties concerning the state of infra infrastructure in New York, which had famously suffered a two-day blackout in July 77 due to failures at several Con Edison power plants. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another example from the poem Eating in the Sky demonstrates how Giorno ironically confronts the detached lyricism of the New York School and the ready-made language of feelings available to the American consumer market. And I quote, uh, you're staying in a motel in Milwaukee, you're staying in a motel in Milwaukee, and you're smoking a cigarette, and you're smoking a cigarette, and I'm gonna get myself another drink, and I'm gonna get myself another drink, and the radio is playing, you just have to wait, love don't come easy, you just, you just have to wait, love don't come easy, you just have to wait, love don't come easy. It's more than you might have expected, so put up the do not disturb sign, so put out the new do not disturb sign, and lock your door. Frank O'Hara, in uh, the poem Steps, mixes the intimacy of waking up with a lover with the joy of living in a city that is both promiscuous and obsessed with appearance and celebrity. John Giorno, on the other hand, uh, plants a similar scene here in the hotel room, but splits his poetic persona by using first and second person pronouns so that we don't know if the persona is by himself or with a lover. And then he blends it with the lyrics of a song by the Supremes playing on the radio. Frank O'Hara's poem reaches outside from the hotel bed to the whole city, but Giorno's lines uses, uh, use voices from the outside to confine the poetic persona inside his own head and the claustrophobic setting of the locked hotel room. Uh, so to finish, and this is kind of unrelated, but I, I can uh, 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 end without uh, talking about that. Uh, so it would be hard to mention uh, Giorno's relationship to the New York School without mentioning his most famous project, uh, Dial Poem, a poetry by phone service that he imagined in 1968 and that the John Giorno Foundation has revived today. And D Dial Poem has mostly been studied through the series of uh, LPs that he put out on his Giorno Poetry Systems label, but now the Foundation has released digital copies of the original logbooks, which you have examples here, uh, with the full list of recordings and daily schedules. And uh, those programs and uh, the complete original recordings are also kept by their foundation, but have not been extensively studied. Uh, however, they provide very interesting insight into the cross-relationships between the first two generations, or so-called generations, of New York soul poetry and other strands of New American poetry.